many artifacts discovered around the world are composed of metals that should have been impossible for ancient people to craft. These items also have many strange characteristics due to their composition. While you may have seen some of these objects before, in this video, I will be explaining their properties and why they should not exist. An oddly shaped piece of iron was discovered fully encased in a type of coal called lignite, which is brown coal still in the process of transitioning between bituminous coal and peat, deep within an Austrian mine in 1885. The perimeter of this object, known as the wolf's egg iron, is roughly square in shape, with the two outwards facing sides being convex. Especially when you compare it to naturally formed iron, it is apparent that the wolf's egg iron has been formed artificially. Some have speculated that this object could be a meteorite. However, scientists tested its composition and confirmed that it was not a meteorite, due to the lack of cobalt, nickel, or chromium. A further investigation in 1973 concluded that it had been cast using the lost wax technique, providing more evidence that the object is man-made. The wolf's egg iron is a solid piece of nearly pure iron, which is what makes it an anomaly. Iron is rarely found pure in nature. It is found as iron ore, a combined mass of iron and other minerals and elements. An iron object which has existed long enough to become embedded in coal should have completely rusted and decomposed. Coal is formed from the compaction and heating of damp and decomposing plant material, such as that which is found in bugs. The moist conditions that the wolf's egg iron would have been situated in to eventually become encased in coal should have caused the object to completely rust and disintegrate. The coal that the wolf's egg iron was embedded in has been dated to be 60 million years old by geologists making the discovery of a man-made object within the coal even more perplexing. A very similar object was discovered in a coal mine in Virginia in the early 1900s. An iron mask resembling the face of a man was found completely embedded in a seam of coal by a worker at the mine. The mask has been determined to be a death mask, created to represent the face of an important individual who had lived long ago. The mask itself weighs over 50 pounds, and is also made of nearly pure iron, yet it has not rusted. The coal that the iron mask was discovered in is estimated to be at least 570 million years old, according to geologists. In 1912, a worker shoveling coal into a furnace at an electric plant in Oklahoma discovered a small, solid iron pot when he broke apart a lump of coal with a shovel. The pot is similar in design to those that casters and tinsmiths use to hold molten metal. Several people witnessed the worker break apart the coal and find the iron pot, confirming that the object had been fully encased in the coal. There were indentations inside of the coal lump where the iron pot had been, further proving that the pot had truly been inside of the lump of coal. The coal itself was dated to be 312 million years old by geologists. A nearly identical incident occurred in Buchanan, West Virginia back in 1944. A boy was carrying a large lump of coal with a shovel to the furnace in his parents' basement. Struggling to carry the coal, it slid off the shovel and hit the ground, breaking apart. Looking down at the shattered coal, the boy realized that there was a brass bell protruding from one of the broken halves. After removing the bell from the coal, he showed it to his parents, and they noticed a strange figure depicted at the top of the bell. Upon later research, they found out that it resembled the ancient Hindu god Garuda. Very similar ancient brass bells depicting Garuda have been discovered in India, which in itself is not surprising, but the fact that one of the same types of bells were also found encased in coal in America indicates that even the bells in India could be far older than is believed. While the bell itself is brass, the clapper inside the bell is made of iron, which has not rusted. It is notable that a bell, which is at least as old as the coal it was inside of, had been made of brass. Since this metal is said to have not been created by humans until around 500 BC, the coal that the boy had found the bell in came from an underground mine in Upshur County, West Virginia, and is dated to be 300 million years old by geologists. It is important that these artifacts are discovered in coal, because it shows that these objects really are ancient, or at least as old as the coal is. It is claimed that coal takes millions of years to form, because geologists assume that the plant material the coal is made from 
accumulated over millions of years to become as dense and thick as it is. Geologists believe in the uniformitarian principle, which means that the Earth changes and develops very slowly and uniformly by only typical natural processes. Geologists presume that disasters do not alter the environment in drastic ways, even though there is plenty of proof that catastrophes such as earthquakes, floods, mudslides, droughts, and more can quickly and drastically change the environment. According to the Argonne National Laboratory, which is a U.S. Department of Energy multidisciplinary science and engineering research center, coal can be formed by heating lignin, which is simply plant material, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for only 36 weeks, which is just over 8 months. Geologists assume that the coal that is mined today was formed from plant materials subjected to relatively low pressure and temperatures, which according to their calculations, would require a very long amount of time to turn into coal. If the plant material had instead been subjected to high heat and high temperatures, however, it could have taken a much shorter amount of time for even large amounts of coal to form. If coal could be created in about 8 months, while only subject to temperatures of 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a very low temperature for an oven, then even in less hot conditions, the coal that is found today in mines could have formed in only a couple years, if not less than a year, especially if the original plant materials had been placed under high levels of pressure. A natural catastrophe combining tectonic activity and major flooding, in which the waters could have remained for months before receding, may have created these conditions. It would have been quite similar to a pressure cooker. The plant materials were buried from the flooding, in between the water above and the magma below the earth. The buried plants would have remained at the correct temperature to transform into coal. Many ancient documents from around the world tell of a cataclysmic event in the past, which flooded the entire world and caused the one single continent to split apart into the seven continents found today, all within the span of roughly one year. If the continents were to split apart in such a short amount of time, there would be an immense amount of subterranean magma generated, mainly along the continental boundaries, as well as friction heating the ground. The vast majority of the magma beneath the Earth, produced from the widespread tectonic activity, would have, for the most part, remained so far from the surface that it would not burn the plants at all, just heat the plant material in the ground that surrounded them. The floodwaters above the buried plant materials would have exerted a tremendous amount of pressure, Studies have shown that hydrostatic pressure causes objects brought under thousands of feet of water to be compressed. For every 33 feet, the pressure increases by one atmosphere, which is a unit of measurement equal to the average air pressure at sea level at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. If the floodwaters really did reach to the top of the mountains, as stated in ancient documents, then the pressure at and below ground level would have been more than high enough to catalyze the process of coal formation. The height of the mountains on Earth range from 1,000 feet to 29,032 feet. If the pressure increases by one atmosphere every 33 feet, then the force exerted on the plant material under the waters would have been a minimum of 30 times the standard pressure of Earth's atmosphere, and could have been a maximum of 879 times the pressure. This amount of force would rapidly compact the plant material so that it would turn into coal. The floodwaters are also said to have remained for about a year, giving more than enough time for the coal formation process to occur. The cooler water above would have also helped to counteract any excess heat from the underground magma, regulating the temperature of the plant materials and further aiding in the process of coal formation. With a pressure cooker, foods are cooked faster due to the combination of heat and pressure. This same combination of tremendous pressure and heat for roughly a year on the large amount of buried plant material during this flood could have easily created the coal seams which exist nowadays. There are proven cases even out in nature in which large masses of plant materials have formed into coal in just a short period of time. During the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, large beds of coal formed rapidly due to the conditions. The amount of coal that would be formed during a worldwide catastrophe, such as the Great Flood described in numerous ancient texts, would be immense and widespread. If before this catastrophe occurred, humans had been able to create these types of objects, then it would make sense that during a major flood, these artifacts would have been swept up 
along with all of the plant materials. And as the plants turned into coal, these objects became embedded inside. The heat generated from the tectonic activity would be enough to heat the plant materials buried under the ground, but not hot enough to damage the metal items that were mixed together with the plants. Another strange metal object was claimed to have been discovered in the Muriz River in central Romania, near the town of Ayud in 1974. This object, known as the Wedge of Ayud, is composed of 90% aluminum, the remaining 10% being a variety of trace elements. The object was buried about 35 feet deep under the sands on the side of the Muriz River. The artifact is claimed to be at least 10,000 years old, due to its presence alongside two mastodon bones, which were also dug up at the site. Humans are said to have been simple hunter-gatherers 10,000 years ago, however, and would not have had the technology to create this object if they had really been so primitive. Aluminum is said to have not been discovered in its pure form until 1825, and up until the mid-1800s, aluminum was more expensive than gold or silver due to the difficult process of extracting the element from ores. If the Wedge of Ayud is not a hoax, and was really buried alongside mastodon bones, then this means that ancient humans may have been far more advanced in their metalworking skills than we know of. In addition to being buried deep underground and embedded in coal, ancient artifacts have been discovered inside of regular rocks. In 1936, a couple was walking alongside the Red Creek near London, Texas, when they discovered a rock with a wooden handle protruding from it. As rock collectors, they decided to take the rock. Their son broke the rock open to see what the wooden handle was connected to, and found a hammer inside of the rock. They brought the hammer into a laboratory for analysis, and it was discovered that the head of the hammer is composed of 96.6% iron and 3.4% trace elements. Despite the high levels of iron, used in its construction, the head of the hammer has not rusted since it was discovered in 1936. The lab testing also found that the handle is now fossilized wood, and parts of the handle had even begun to transition into coal. The type of rock that the hammer was in is called a limey rock concretion. Concretions are masses of mineral matter embedded within rock layers, including limestone, sandstone, and shale typically formed when a mineral precipitates and cements sediment around an object, which is often organic, but can also be inorganic, with this ancient hammer being a combination of organic and inorganic materials. Geologists have dated the rock casing to be four to five hundred million years old. The London hammer has become such a point of contention that some mainstream archaeologists and other researchers have opted to term the object the London artifact rather than the London hammer irrationally asserting that the embedded object is not a hammer and only appears to resemble one, so that the presence of this man-made hammer inside of hardened mud claimed to be four to five hundred million years old does not conflict with their overarching academic beliefs. If the London hammer was a more recently made object that had been encased in mud in some way, then the mud would not have hardened into rock yet because according to geologists, it can take millions of years for mud to turn into stone. The only way for this process to be sped up is for carbonate-rich water to be present in between the grains of mud or sand, and for high levels of pressure to be exerted on the mud. Carbonate sediments are produced and deposited in areas of active volcanism, which would then be dispersed in the floodwaters mentioned earlier. The decaying plant matter in the water would also have increased the carbonate levels, as the carbonate-rich water encompassed and compacted the mud, the mud that the London hammer was encased in would have rapidly hardened into stone, even within the span of a year in which this flooding may have occurred. The iron portion should have completely rusted during its contact with the floodwaters, or at least during its contact with the moist mud. The fact that it hasn't rusted is due to the iron's unnatural characteristics. Another unusual iron object sharing the same anti-rusting properties as the London, Texas hammer, is located in New Delhi, India. This artifact, known as the Iron Pillar of Delhi, stands at 23 feet 8 inches tall and is composed of 98% iron and 2% trace elements. This composition has lent to the pillar's extreme rust resistance. Especially with the pillar being exposed to the elements for so long, it should have rusted much more than it has. 
There are iron brackets that were used as supports for the ancient temples across India, which also show no signs of rust corrosion. The reason as to why some are broken is likely because looters had attempted to remove the brackets so that they could make tools and other things from them, since iron is so difficult to obtain. As the brackets would have adhered to the temple in some way, there would have been resistance as these looters tried to remove the brackets, and they would sometimes snap in half, leaving the other half still attached to the temples. If you observe the remaining iron brackets, you will notice no rust corrosion anywhere, and the brackets are still a dark gray iron color, rather than a bright orange iron oxide color. The same types of iron brackets, used in ancient architecture in other regions, including Iran, Egypt, and Ethiopia, are also unrusted. And as with the brackets in India, the brackets used in other structures worldwide had also been taken. Modern structures made of iron, by contrast, have decomposed in just a few decades. Iron tools made by the Romans and iron axes made by Vikings have rusted completely because they did not have the same capability as ancient people of altering iron. The Pillar of Delhi, as well as these iron brackets, have not rusted in thousands of years by comparison. Adding to the impressive engineering of the pillar, it was created from a solid piece of metal rather than being composed of multiple smaller pieces of metal. This is impressive due to the size of the pillar, standing at almost 24 feet tall. Even with modern technology, it is very difficult to construct metal pillars, especially one as large as the Pillar of Delhi. The iron would first have to be mined, and then smelted in a specific way to make it have the concentration of elements that it has. In order to shape the pillar, it would need to be heated to a molten state first. Even shaping the pillar would have been an intricate and cumbersome process. Creating a pillar of iron would be much more difficult than making one from stone, and yet the Pillar of Delhi was created thousands of years ago. Even stranger, it has been discovered that whenever the Pillar of Delhi is brought into contact with water, including rain, the pillar produces a strange material known as Mesa White, a compound of iron, hydrogen, and oxygen, which has prevented the pillar from rust accumulation. Very similar to the iron pillar's protective coating, aluminum also has a natural resistance to corrosion due to the spontaneous formation of an adherent impermeable layer of aluminum oxide, which tends to self-repair immediately, even when breached, due to aluminum's high oxidation rate. Did ancient people engineer the iron they constructed with to replicate the same self-coating protection against corrosion as aluminum? If so, how were they able to do this? Iron found naturally does not have this feature, so it would need to have been altered in some way. The fact that ancient people would have gone through the effort of altering iron so that it would not corrode actually suggests that the environment had been different when these artifacts were created. First, the evidence suggests that these objects were made before a worldwide flood occurred. As explained in the third video of this channel, a worldwide flood would have caused the Earth's environment to have been altered drastically. The oxygen in the air would have been reduced by a significant amount after the flood, and there would be much less humidity. Since before the flood, there would have been much more oxygen and humidity in the air, unaltered iron would be unusable, since it would rust much quicker than even modern iron. Therefore, ancient people would have altered the properties of the iron they constructed with to make it resistant to rusting. The Mesa White coating that is created from moisture would be perpetually present due to the dense humidity of the air when this pillar would have been on display originally. This would explain why these iron objects all around the world were made in the same way to prevent rusting. Since the iron pillar of Delhi and the support brackets are made of the same rust-resistant iron, as the artifacts discovered in coal, they were likely made during the same time period by the same people who had shared knowledge of how to smell iron in this way, and therefore the pillar of Delhi and these brackets could be much older than is believed. The brass bell found in coal was also made to withstand corrosion in such an oxygen-rich environment. Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, usually made of mostly copper. Brass is created because copper on its own oxidizes and corrodes rapidly, just like standard iron. Ancient people would not have mixed together copper and zinc ore without first understanding what would happen if they did this. Native Americans created tools from copper, since this metal alone was easily mineable from the surface around the Great Lakes regions. 
and does not require advanced smelting techniques to work with. These copper tools have corroded since they were made, however, because the Native Americans were unable to mix the copper with other materials such as zinc. Because zinc ore is very difficult to obtain, and the process of smelting is also very difficult. The people who had created these brass and iron artifacts that were also discovered in North America were far more advanced in their metalworking than the Native Americans. Since these corrosion-proof artifacts were found in coal, they would most likely be older than the Native American groups, which had made pure copper tools. The fact that these more advanced metal artifacts all share the same unnatural properties demonstrates that ancient metallurgists in different regions before the Great Flood occurred all shared the same knowledge of how to manipulate metal in this way. The air all across Earth had been more oxygen-rich and humid before this flood occurred, so all iron needed to be engineered in the same way to prevent corrosion. Also, due to the higher levels of oxygen and moisture in the air, there is a much greater abundance of vegetation on Earth. Geologists and religious leaders unanimously agree that at some time in the Earth's past, the entire world had a tropical climate. Researchers have discovered that the Arctic's climate was once like Florida's. Traces of an ancient rainforest were recently discovered in Antarctica. The Sahara Desert in Africa was even completely green up until around 4,500 years ago, when, as the Smithsonian Magazine puts it, the transition from humid to dry happened far more rapidly in some areas than could be explained by the orbital precession alone resulting in the Sahara Desert as we know it today. The reason as to why the Sahara had turned into a desert is most likely due to the climate changes which resulted from the worldwide flood that had occurred around 4,500 years ago. This cataclysm would have been responsible for the burial of these artifacts in coal and rock, and for the damage seen on ancient structures around the world. These artifacts and structures were made so well, however, that they were able to withstand the cataclysm so that they could still be rediscovered by modern people. The fact that man-made objects are being found in rocks dated to be hundreds of millions of years old means that either the datings of these materials is incorrect, or that these artifacts are truly hundreds of millions of years old. Both of these possibilities are difficult to cope with, as they each reveal that the history of the Earth and humanity is not as it seems.